Hey there, I'm Kimberly Ferguson, CEO and founder of Emerald Expectations Accounting. I'm so happy you're here. The Emerald Corner is a place where life and business meet. So we want to share with you the process of running a business while maintaining a life with your loved ones. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 30 unique business ideas. Okay. Now, some of these ideas are actually service based ideas, which means that they would cost little to no money to actually start these businesses. There are a few in here that would require some money or property to start, but I'll note those as we go along. All right, let's jump in. So the first idea is a pickup or drop off service. I did touch on this just a little bit in one of my previous videos, but this kind of goes along with that. So people around your neighborhood, you know, they might need things or they might need to have things picked up and taken somewhere. So you can actually start a business basically doing just that, you know, taking things to the mail, taking things, you know, returns back to the store, that kind of stuff. Other types of pick up and drop off things would be like, you know, dry cleaning, picking up dry cleaning, dropping off dry cleaning, picking up packages, stuff like that. So if you can pick up and drop off things, anything really, then you could create a business doing that. Kind of going alongside that, the second one is kind of like an errand business. So similarly to picking up, dropping off, but it would obviously require more types of things. So think about all the errands that you have to run personally and create a business around that. You know, taking your dog to the groomer, taking your kids to daycare, picking your car in to get an oil change or getting the tires rotated, anything like that. Just think about the errands that you run on a day-to-day -day basis and you could use those. Third idea is a virtual assistant. So a lot of people have started these types of businesses, basically where you're doing the things that an assistant would do, but you do them virtually. So you maybe check emails, you update calendars, you schedule appointments, you answer the phone, save documents, all that fun stuff, but you can do it from anywhere in the world. Number four is a dog walking business. So this is not for everybody I know, not everybody out there loves it. pets, loves dogs, but if you do, and you know you like getting outside, maybe you like exercising, then this might be a great fit for you. Go to the people in your neighborhood as a start and just see if anybody needs help walking your dog. People are busy anywhere that they can find those little conveniences, they would be probably willing to pay, right? Kind of going alongside of that is number five, which is a pet sitting business. Now, I've actually seen this done multiple ways, and one of those would obviously require you to have some sort of property somewhere where you could keep the pets, whether that's inside your house or you know in a garage or something like that that's heated and cooled so that they could be at a comfortable temperature. But the other option would be for you to actually visit people's homes and check in on their pets on a regular basis, let them out to use the bathroom, maybe take them for walks, get make sure they have enough food and water, that kind of thing. So there's multiple ways you could do this that doesn't really require any money or any property in order to start. So number six is become a course creator. So you would probably be surprised to know the number of courses that there are out there. Think about something that you're an expert at or even something that you maybe know more of than other people, even if you're not an expert, I'm sure there are people that you know more of something, right? Maybe you know how to use a cell phone and you want to target some of the older crowd. You can actually create a course on how to use your cell phone or how to use a computer or how to use Microsoft Excel or, you know, anything like that. Whatever you're good at, you could turn that into a course and sell it online. Number seven is social media management. Do you love being on social media? Do you love Facebook? Do you love Instagram? Do you love whatever's out there now? <laughs> you could actually manage other small businesses' social media accounts. So create posts for them, interact with clients, respond to comments, answer questions, that kind of stuff. Actually even posting their content that you create, all that stuff you can do. And if you do it for multiple businesses, it can be pretty lucrative. Number eight is like a niche cleaning service. Now, obviously we've got, you know, home cleaning or something like that. There's a lot of opportunity there as well, but you could also go for something a little bit more niche, you know, like cleaning the interior of cars or cleaning carpets or cleaning pets or cleaning siding or parking lots or pools. I mean, whatever you can come up with, what's in your neighborhood that needs cleaning. 
and you can start a business around that. Number nine is a grocery delivery service. Now, obviously you could join a grocery delivery service and just become a contractor and that's absolutely an opportunity there. But another option would be to actually just kind of go around to the people that you know, go around your neighborhood and see if anybody needs grocery delivery services. Visiting homes where elderly people live and seeing if maybe they could use such a service. That kind of a thing might be kind of interesting to do on your own. Number 10 is open an Etsy store. Obviously this requires some form of talent or product, <laughs> but it's totally an opportunity. I mean, you could make blankets, you could make clothes, you could make jewelry, you could make handbags. I mean, anything that you can think of to make, you could sell it online on Etsy. Even hand designed stationery, you could sell stationery templates even, so you don't even have to print it and mail it. You could just say, here's the template, you print it. <laughs> so open an Etsy store, right? Number 11 is sell novelty t-shirts. So there's a couple of different ways you could do this that would require you to have an inventory and spend money up front, which would be to purchase said novelty t-shirts and then resell them. Another option would be to actually design them and go through a site that will actually print and create those t-shirts for you. So you don't even have to have any kind of inventory. If you go on like Shopify or there's tons of other sites online that actually provide you with the t-shirts and they will print them and they will ship them. And there's a whole business right there, right? <laughs> Number 12 is to create and sell tourist guides. Now this one's kind of fun if you like to travel because you would obviously want to go to the places that you're creating these guides for if possible. But if you already like traveling, you're already going traveling, then you could actually create a tour, a tourist guide. Hi, future Kimberly here. I was actually editing this video and I realized I missed a key piece of information that comes with setting up a business where you write and create tour guides, right? The biggest thing with this is if you love traveling and you are traveling anyways, or you're wanting to travel anyways, you can actually use this type of a business to make your travel expenses deductible on your taxes. So if you start a travel business, you go places to build these tour guides and to take the tours or to go to the events or to do whatever it is that you wanna do and you're actually ranking these things and giving people advice, then that becomes a tax deductible expense. And so you just made your travel you know, work for you and you still get to travel, right? That's great. All right, back to our regularly scheduled event. Number 13 is become a proofreader. People like me need you in the world, okay? <laughs> I am much more, you know, math and business minded than I am English. So I personally need a proofreader in my life. And there are probably millions of business owners who are the same or even just generally professionals. Proofread resumes and cover letters and that kind of stuff for professionals to submit when they're looking for a new position, stuff like that. Even proofreading social media pages or LinkedIn pages, that's something that you could do as well. Number 14 is a proposal planner. This is kind of interesting, I think. Kind of like an event planner, but specialized. Helping, you know, young men who are looking to propose to the woman of their dreams, help them plan the perfect evening for their loved one. I think this sounds kind of interesting. Number 15 would be a gift finder. So I actually helping people who aren't very good at giving gifts to come up with great gifts for their loved ones as well. So it you would especially understand this if you are not a gifts person and you are married to a gifts person or your siblings or your parents are gift persons or your friends, you know, whatever that looks like. And they love getting gifts and they get so excited when you've come up and really thought out a great gift for them. Well, this is where you could actually help those people who are gift challenged and <laughs> help them to find the perfect gift for their loved one. Number 16 is laundry. Raise your hand if you love doing laundry, yeah, right? So if you are one of those people, <laughs> you can start a business doing people's laundry. So wash, dry, fold. Obviously this could be done in multiple ways. You could actually work with a laundromat and help them to do those items. And you obviously would use their washers and dryers to do this. Another option would be to go to people's homes and do their laundry there. Or of course you could collect all the laundry, do the laundry at your house or wherever you'd like to do it. 
lots of great options that don't necessarily involve you having to have the proper equipment to do this, right? But wash, dry, fold, whatever that looks like, iron maybe even, and prepare people's laundry for them. Number 17 is a homemade meal kit creation. Are you a good chef? Are you a good cook? I'm not, I'm okay, but not great. <laughs> but if you are, and you kind of know what it takes to put together a good meal that is, you know, cohesive and the ingredients are complementary and all that fun stuff, then you could actually do this locally, right? Obviously there's the big companies that do the meal planning, but why can't you do it in your neighborhood? Why can't you do it in your town? You could totally do that. And again, usually they get payment up front before actually creating the meals. So you wouldn't necessarily need any funds to start said business. You would just need a place to cook and obviously the proper utensils and equipment. But other than that, it's a pretty inexpensive way to start a business. Number 18 is a virtual stylist. Fun, right? So if you are stylish and you know a lot about clothing and what lays right on people and different colors that look good with different people's skin tones and hair color and all that fun stuff, then you could actually create a company becoming a virtual stylist. So again, this is something that doesn't really require any money. It does require that you have some sort of a device maybe that you can you know, do video calls or something of that nature where you can connect with the client virtually and get their likes and dislikes, and, you know, what they're looking for and all that fun stuff. But you can do that on a computer, on a tablet. So, you know, you don't have to have a ton of money in order to start that type of a business. Kind of a segue from that, number 19 is a virtual interior designer. So same thing where you don't really have a lot of startup costs. You just need a computer or a tablet or something of that nature to meet with your clients and to look online for the types of products that they're looking for actually help them to create a cohesive and designed look for their home or for just a room or whatever that looks like. Number 20 is an Airbnb host. Now this obviously requires you to have some sort of property, but this could just be your home. If you have, you know, a finished basement in your home that you're not using, you can list that on Airbnb. You'd be surprised the kind of money that you can make from renting out just a small space in your home. Obviously, that's going to depend on you know where you're located, if there's anything interesting and fun to do in your town, if there's a lot of tourists, that kind of thing, but it's a great option for a lot of people. Number 21 is become a pet influencer. <laughs> that's fun, right? So people have social media accounts, right? And I'm sure you've seen online, there's a lot of pets that have social media accounts. So if you have a pet and you like to make content surrounded by them, or you would like to, then you can actually create social media accounts for your pet and then post content for them that, you know, you could earn money that way. Number 22 is pet portrait services. So kind of similarly to, you know, being a pet lover, but you would actually either one, go to people's homes and take pets there. You could go to parks, you could go to places that are public, obviously. So you wouldn't necessarily need to have a studio to do that, but that would be something you could have if you want, you know, if you had the funds or you had a location. You could have a studio, have these pets come to your studio, put together fun little portrait sessions for them, just like you would do with a person, except obviously they would be pet oriented. So I think that's kind of fun. Number 23 is a repair company or like a handyman company. Some people call it a honeydew list type of company. So if you're handy or if your husband's handy and he wants to start a business, then that would be an option, right? So anything that you would ask your husband to do or, you know, you might ask your kids to do or you would ask the guy around the neighborhood that you guys are friends with to do, you know, whatever that looks like those types of things can be done to create a business. So, you know, like just painting or fixing a squeaky door, you know, getting a window on jams, just little things around the house that, you know, people have to do for maintenance. So I think that's a great company. Number 24 is a reselling service. So this is similar to selling the novelty t-shirts, except it could be anything. Um, again, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. You could actually go around to the different you know, stores that have really discounted prices and purchase things that you know you can then resell somewhere else for more, right? So if you 
go to Goodwill or you go to Walmart or you go to some store that has low prices. And then, you know, online on Amazon or on eBay or whatever it looks like, you can sell them for more. Then that's what you would do. You just go around and buy things and sell them. You can also do this right on the internet. So you don't even necessarily have to leave your house. You can go on eBay, find great deals, resell them somewhere else, you know? Number 25 is a babysitting matchmaker. I think this one sounds fun too, but matching qualified babysitters to needy parents. So obviously this would require you to have a little bit of knowledge of the neighborhood that you live in or the area that you live in. But if you know a lot of young people who would be willing to help with babysitting and you know a lot of needy parents, then match them up. You can create a whole service around that. So number 26 is a moving service or a packing service. So kind of hand in hand there. Help people pack up their homes in order to move or help people actually move. So you might need a truck for this or you could work with a truck rental company to do something like that, but just help them take their stuff and pack it and move it to a new place. Pretty simple, but it's a highly demanded Thing. Actually, there's a lot of places in the country that don't offer any kind of service like that. And the places that do, you know, they make a lot of money. So it's an option. Number 27 is an organizing company. Are you pretty organized? If you are, help other people get organized. Help other people organize their paperwork. Help them organize their stuff. Help them with their kitchen drawers and their, you know, clothing closets and all that, all that fun stuff. You can help them in person. If you want to work with people locally, or you can even probably move into like a virtual organizing opportunity where they send you pictures or they send you videos and you can go through and create some recommendations for them to go through and, you know, declutter and reorganize and whatever that would look like. So number 28 is a transcription service or like a caption writer even. I don't know how many of you have seen captions online, but someone's got to write them, right? Sometimes they can be done electronically, I know, but it may or may not be done well. I'm sure if you're looking at the captions on here, they might match, they might not match. I, I don't know, it's hard to say. But if you are a person doing that, then you can make sure that they're right. The other thing with that is you could actually, you know, take audio recordings and type them out. So some people want transcriptions for, you know, their meetings or their um, appointments with clients, whatever that would look like for them presentations even, they want somebody to come in and take what they've recorded and write it down so that they have notes that they can go back and reference. So you can do things like that too. Number 29 is a resume writer or a copywriter. They can kind of go hand in hand or they could be two completely separate things, right? So copywriting, maybe things like emails or contact for social media or things to put on a website, whatever that would look like. And then resume writer, obviously people looking for jobs, they need to you know, put their experience down on paper and oftentimes they need to include a cover letter too and it's hard to know what to say and do you tailor it to the job that you're trying to get to and what does all that look like, you know what I mean? So I think there's a lot of demand for that as well. And then the last one is just a general event planner. So we talked about doing a proposal planner, but this is just for other events, you know, weddings or birthday parties or retirement parties or whatever that would look like. People more and more are wanting to celebrate big milestones, right? We've got gender reveal parties. We've got, you know, engagement parties and bridal parties and all that stuff. Party, party, party. So you could plan those parties, right? So what do you think? Would any of these companies be something that you would be interested in starting? Do you think I missed some? I know I missed some. There's millions of ideas out there. But what do you think should be on this list as far as a unique company to start. Let me know in the comments below, will you? Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.